the name of the talk is Spock. It is a prologue in closure. I am trying trying to experiment on putting a real prologue inside closure, and that's it. Before everything, a little quick about me. I am the author of Chlorine and Clover, plugins for the Atom Editor and VS Code. Currently, I'm living on Montevideo, Uruguay, and we do accept Clojureans if you want to move here. Ping me on the Clojurian Slack. And I'm also searching for people to help on reviving the idea of a hackable text editor. I know that I posted this on the Clojurian Slack, but anyway, if you are not familiar with how Atom is being handled recently because of the VS Code and changing your focus is kind of like dying slowly and I don't want to see that. So if you want to help, ping me. But that this no this doesn't have anything to do with Spock. So let's start with Spock right now. So before I start talking about Prolog and inside of Clojure, let me do a brief reminder of Prolog. So we have imperative languages like I command the computer. We have Clojure in functional languages like we have some data, you have an equation over that data and you want to get a result. I'm using equation here kind of loosely. You can concatenate strings and this may be an equation also. And logic is quite different. You don't command the computer. You say this thing here is true. So you have a fact and you have some places when you can mix and match so you do everything by equality back back tracking pattern matching so there's no order there's no transformation in the traditional sense you don't like map increment something you do something differently so i'm gonna show a little bit of code in a minute but so the a brief, brief reminder in prologue you have facts in this case for example i have a person Let's call Mauricio, have this age in those two languages. By the way, I'm not 22, just for the fact, for the record. And the rule is something that will map fact into some, no, some new information. It's kind of like a function. So in this case, I'm saying that a programmer of a specific language have a specific name if you have a person with that name that knows a bunch of language. And the language that I am searching is a member of that list of languages. So that's how you program in Prolog. So the elements are atoms, in this case, Mauricio, Clojure, Prolog, Ruby, Pearl, everything that's flattened, something like this. Variables start with uppercase in Prolog, but you, you don't need to be. It's just the, the traditional sense you do start with uppercase and Prolog will parse it as a variable. And the structure is kind of like I showed, person, name, age, list, this is a structure when you have, it seems like a function call for another languages, but it's almost the same as a def record in Clojure. And a list is exactly a list in Clojure. Not a vector, a list. First element is the, is a cone cell, something like this. And in my conversion to Clojure, I define it that atoms will become symbols, variables will become keywords, structs will become a list, so it kind of looks like a functional call, and list will become a vector. This may confuse like atoms and symbols because, for example, if you are familiar with uh, the atomic, you see that probably symbols are variables and not uh, identifiers. But it it maps better to closure to mapping this in this order. In the initial order, I try to do the opposite, but then I will get a result that's a map where the keys are symbols and the values are keywords, and that was kind of weird. Okay, so Prolog is not a single thing. Prolog is a multiple implementation, so there's two Prolog, it's Java native. I started with this uh, with this binding. But it find out that's really slow, like it's even slower than car match. So it wasn't really, it's also kind of incomplete and have zero documentation. So I found out why I am mapping to Prolog if I can't use it. So I'm now using SWI Prolog. It needs FFI to run. So it runs this Java Prolog bridge. But it works, so I'm going to use SWI Prolog in the presentation. 
So now demo time, it's a simple slide. Most people that like Emacs like to present inside Emacs. I am not an Emacs user, so I'm presenting inside Atom. So let's see if it, this works. All right, so Prolog tries to unify things. In this case, it's not, I'm not like asking if 20 is equal to 20. I am trying to solve that 20 is equal to 20. And you see that there is a single result and there's no binding here. So I may replace 20 for a variable, let's call n. And now I have a single result when n must be replaced with 20 so that this equation is true. So that's how things work. So Spock, it's basically the SWI prolog version of, of, the, of the prolog. How it works, it will start a real SWI prolog and then evaluate everything over there with this, bri with this bridge. So that's how things are working correct currently. And another example from, in this case, it's I am trying to solve this equation that the length of a three element list is three. And as you can see, it solves, but it's kind of hard to parse that this is true and this, for example, is false. So I decided to do a custom render so that you'll get the familiar resulting prolog, no. So there's no, this, this condition here will not be true. So prolog simply returns me no, it's an empty list. And if I put three here, it will say to me that there's only a single result and that result is yes, I can match, this is true. And also I can replace n here, and I know that the length of three element list is three, or I can do the opposite. I can put three here and try to match a list. And that's where the power of prolog comes. You see that it tried to solve this equation and it said, okay, I can have a three element list. I can fill it this blank with a list of three elements. It doesn't matter what it's inside the list. So it's just a list with three whatever things. The same thing happens, for example, with member. Member means that seven is a member of nine, seven, and three, and the result is yes. But I can also replace it with a variable. And that's where backtracking comes in, in Prolog. So in this case, Result means that there are three possible results for this equation. One is that n equals nine, other that equals seven, and the other is equal three. It's not the same as a list of results. It's literally three different results. So that's how things work. In Clojure, this will map to a list with three different possibilities. So that's how the bridge between Prolog and Clojure works right now. And in Prolog, you can do lots of wonderful and interesting things. Like you can do, you can ask for a length of a list with four elements. So it will try to fill the list. And I want the seven to be a member of this list. I am combining both with and. So I have four different results where seven is in each position in the list. So it's quite amazing. And I can do more complicated things like list of three elements and five and two are elements of the list and then i have like five and two in multiple positions so every possible combination of five and two in a three element list is presented here and we have an unbound variable here it's something that we can do you can put whatever you want here to work and okay so this in prolog it's this enclosure maps again to a simple list where underscore is preceded by a number so in prolog underscore is a catch-all variable i'm not sure why the bridge between prolog and closure transforms the underscore in the underscore a number but well it doesn't matter it just it is the way that it is okay so far this is how spock solves simple equations and as you can see, I did map and 
and also or if you want to the prolog counterparts but this is kind of like using Papashka just for the the parsing abilities of standard in standard out and not like defining new variables new functions so to define new variables and functions in Spock you can do in both ways in prolog you have facts and rules and I decided at the beginning that facts and rules are inside a vector and the inner element is a three two or one element of prolog data so for example in this case it's a two element so it's a fact so i'm saying that person mauricio 22 knows closure and prolog and person this other person 27 no ruben pearl and we have two different facts here i am using with rules that returns an object that when you close it will retract as rules and why is that in prolog everything you define it as a rule as a fact became global will become global and it's kind of hard to do that with test driven development and other things you can test things that are global so if you are like testing your rules you have to keep retracting and asserting everything so this kind of works like a transaction in a database you roll back everything in the end and everything works probably so that's how I define it in the in the first place. I will probably change this in the future to do like something like this. I think it's better and so on and so forth. But well, um, things can things changed a little bit when I when I was changing the the rules and facts. So to solve this equation, I will do Spock solve. I pass rules as the first argument. Maybe I just put it here so we can see it's the first argument. And the second argument is the prolog query that I want to solve. So you see that there's only a single result and it binds every variable to everything that it can find. So language will be closure, name will be Mauricio, language is closure and prolog. That's the language that Mauricio knows. If you want to define a rule and not a fact, you will do a three different, you'll do like a three element uh, list. So in this, case, in this case, vector. So if I want to know the programmer of a specific language, the first are, the first are like the arguments of this, so the language, and the name are arguments and here are a bunch of facts that must be true so that programmer of also must be true so for example i will say that i have to get a person that have the same name as a, the one that i'm trying to find and that the language that i want to find is a member of the language that the person know so now i can solve the equation programmer of closure and i want to know the name of the person oh and i get the name is mauricio so there's only one programmer that knows closure in this fact base that's mauricio but i can do others for example um, and now i have two different people here so it works and after the with open runs then everything is retracted so if you made a mistake here don't worry close will just retract everything in the end okay so to test my implementation and see if my spock implementation is correct i decided to do a chessboard and a chess game and just for the the gist of it if if I was working with Clodry, I would probably define a board containing every piece and I will somehow like say, okay, the rook can move in this position. So I will have like a move element when I ask for a specific piece in a specific position of the board to move and it will give me the resulting possibilities. So I decided to do the same in Prolog and there are two ways of doing this. You can do the impure way impure means 
In the beginning, you assert every piece in a specific position in the board, both with Prolog or with Spock. But that makes things complicated again for test-driven purposes and also because moving a piece becomes an impure operation. You don't make logic operations, you do orders. Like, for example, if I assert the rook in this position, when I move the rook, I have to retract the position and then assert a new position. So I decided to use a list of facts. So it's a little bit slower, but for our purposes, it works fast enough. And a list of facts is literally a group of positions in the board and a move that will get the position, not the piece, sorry, the position that I want to move. So for example, I want to move this black rook with this game, last board is necessary for some complicated moves that chess have. The board, the current ball, the board and some flags, and I will return, return a new board. So this unifies if the piece with this game returns a new board that's the piece moved in that position. So in prologue, it means doing something like this. Okay, so I am not going to show everything here on how the piece moves. I'm going to just show things. For, for example, if I have a board right now, this is in closure side. So this is closure. And I want to get every member of the board, but I don't have the board in prolog side. This is closure. It's a local variable in closure. I can use bind in Spock to define, okay, this variables in, in prolog will become this elements in closure. So this will convert the vector that I have in closure side to prolog, and then it will run this equation. I want to get a member. The member is a member of the board. So if I do that, you will see that I get the member and the board. And as there are only two pieces, then there's only two members, only two results. This became harder to read and even harder to implement in chess. So I decided to do, again, a custom render. This is Florine side. So now I have, I can see that the black rook on 0, 0 is this piece and the black knight on 0, 1 is this piece. And it will be really easier to see the pieces moving in this, in this manner. So how do I decide to implement this logic? So move will delegate to moves that will delegate to simple moves in prologue side. And moves will be purely implemented for pawn and knights. If you are not familiar with chess, pawn and knights do have some complicated moving rules. So I decided to move to implement them separate. And the simple moves are just king, rook, bishop, and queen. And how did I implement that? So I decided to do something in prolog side called gen lists. So starting in the position five, for example, it will try to generate a list with positions to the left and positions to the, to the right, or as in this case, it's a row, so it's positions to the bottom and positions to the top. And gen lists will generate another list. Combine, it will combine both then. So this is how the end result would be. If you are familiar with this combination, you will see that's exactly the same as doing something like map vector range, for example, five, six to eight, and range five to eight. And this apply to multiple iterations and so on and so forth, so that it returns all the four results. So this is the first problematic code in in Spock, like I mean, you see that combine here and gen lists are not really that easy to understand. And that's why I try to, that's, a, that's why I'm trying to invest in Spock, because this is really easy to do in Clojure, but it's kind of hard to do in Prolog. So that's why I, I I may have some 
updates in the future where I could send Clojure comments to the product side and do everything there instead of like keeping mapping over and over. But it works. Okay, so here I am showing where Clojure shines. It shines more in combining these lists. But where Prolog shines is in a different place. So uh, let me show you here. Um, 129 lines of code is how I implemented almost every chess piece, chess movement. And with this bunch of rules and an initial board, I can make movements freely in any piece. So for example, let's suppose, let's start with a, with a, with a board as it is. So this is a simple board. Suppose that I want to move this pawn here. So instead of like saying, okay, I want to move this pawn in a specific position, I will just ask to move this pawn and prologue will return me the possible movements for that pawn. So there are two valid movements. So that's quite interesting, but there are other benefits. So for example, this is a position where the pawn is. It's on the position on, oh, let, I just copied. Let me see which the last position. So it's in the position two, two. I can do in any other order that I want. I can ask to move the pawn to that piece, or I can ask to move any black piece in any position, but the end result, so this end board here, I want to have a black pawn with the position 2-2. Two, two. So I didn't ask for prolog, I didn't show or tell prolog which piece he will move. I just said, okay, I want that a black pawn must be in this specific position on the resulting board. And if I run this code, if I did, didn't do anything incorrectly, yeah, the black pawn is here. It's the only movement that will solve this equation. It doesn't need to be also a black pawn, it can be any piece. So now I have a knight that can go here and a pawn can go here. So with this ability in Prolog, everything becomes way easier when I am trying to solve things like uh, checkmate rules. So what's a checkmate? It's the player, for example, I want to show, I want to show if the player is if the game ended for that player. So if the player is in check on that board, and here I'm asking if any piece can move to any place in a new board. And if it's not true, so I, I am in check, the player is in check, the player can't move any piece to a new board and exit the check, so the game ends in a checkmate. The same rule applies for the stalemate. If the player is not in check, but he also can't move, then the end game is in a stalemate. I know that there's some equation in prolog in, in chess to get, okay, this is a checkmate position, but I don't want to, to, I don't know, worry about that. I am just doing brute force and prolog allows me to do brute force in this very few lines, 11 lines to just brute force if I am in checkmate or not. So it's kind of amazing if you think about it. And by doing that, and by using this ability of prologue, I can do lots of things. So for example, suppose I want to do the chess notation for, uh, for chess. So chess notation is quite hard to implement if you are familiar with it. Because, for example, I am saying that I want to play a piece in the position e4, and the position e4 is this one. So I'm not telling Prolog, I'm not telling the chessboard which piece I want to move here 
I just want a piece to be able to move here. So by using a specific parser here that just says, okay, this is the end position, try to find a piece that will go in this position, I can move the piece, the right piece move to the board. And I do the same with black pieces. So that's kind of interesting. If you are familiar with uh, Prolog and if you saw the, the facts and rules and other things, you can imagine that by printing this board in, a, in Prolog and doing the IO in Prolog, matching rejects, generating the right query, it's quite complicated. But I am not doing this in Prolog. I am doing in Clojure. So, for example, just notation form E4 for, for the player white, it means that the start position is a piece white and pawn, because if I don't say what's the piece that I want to move is a pawn, and it doesn't matter which position, but the end position must be 4-4 four, four to the same white pawn. The same is for queen, for example. I want to move a queen, and it knows that start position is a white queen, it doesn't matter where, and the end position is a white queen in the position 4-4. Four, four. Also, uh, chess notation must uh, mandate that you disambiguate your, your query. So, for example, if two different pieces can go to that position, for example, in the position 4-4, four, four, two different pawns can, do, can go there, you have to disambiguate and say, what is the pawn that, that goes there? This is also solved with a uh, move piece. So move piece will count the number of prolog results that I got. If it's not equal to one, it will say, okay, this is not a valid move. So I found like three different possibilities, two different possibilities or zero. There's no piece that can move there. So you can't move this piece in that position. So that's how things work. And also, if I keep playing that, if you are familiar with chess, you know that this is a quite known opening. You move the bishop here, the black pawn do something wrong, and then I move the queen here. This is me this means a checkmate, and so the game finished with checkmate. Just to show that I can brute force checkmates and see if it's a possibility. And uh, last thing, suppose that I know that there's a movement that starts with this, this pawn here, this one, oh, sorry, yeah, I know that there's a movement that makes a checkmate in four steps, but I'm not really sure what are the other steps, so I can brute force in prolog. So here I'm saying, okay, these all rules must be true. Starting with an empty board, moving the white pawn in that position to a new board, moving a black piece, I don't know which piece is, I don't know where it is, in the step one, I'll get step two, moving a white piece, again, I have no, no knowledge about it, to the step three, and moving a black piece to the step four, it ends with white being checkmated in the last step. So I can run this code, it will be a little slow because, well, this code is not really optimized, but surely you'll see that I am getting the, the board, the first step, the second step, the third step, and the fourth step, and I probably will see the, the result, yeah, so here's the first board, the movement of the pawn, the movement of the black piece, the movement of the second pawn, and this is a checkmate. So I know nothing about chess. I literally did, didn't say what will happen, and it found that this bunch of rules will get me a checkmate. So this, imagine the, the possibilities that you can do with that, like, uh, you can use prolog inside your, your closure code with minimal effort. 
Okay, so the idea is to have the best of both worlds. So Clojure makes some very pragmatic decisions on how to add impure code into your functional code. If you are familiar, for example, with Haskell and Elm, there are some ideas on how to get impure code in your functional code. They sometimes don't translate well, so it's kind of hard to juggle the, the IO monad with everything else. And in Clojure, it's really easy. So you have mostly a functional core, but you can do imperative programming if you need. But in Prolog, this impure code is kind of weird. It's not really that easy. So for example, if I want to print that board with Prolog, I would use this code. And it's hard to understand this code. It's really complicated. And it doesn't print a good board if you print the board like this. And as you can see, some pieces are truncated. I didn't have the patient to do the right thing. That would be the white space padding and so on and so forth. And in Clojure, the code is like this. It's already white space padded, so everything works correctly. So why do in Prolog way if we, if we can do in, in Clojure way? And also, there's not an easy way to convert Clojure code to the Prolog counterpart. So use Prolog when it makes sense and do everything else in Clojure and that probably will, will get the best of both worlds. Okay, that's it for Spock. Do anyone have questions?